Matthew here, your BRS beginner guru, and today in episode five, we're adding flow to our tank in a thoughtful way to keep our tank clean and our corals thriving. Water movement inside our aquarium, when done right, has the potential to remove fish food and waste, provide nutrition to our coral, and remove coral waste. But when the flow is done wrong, we'll have massive dead spots, increased phosphate and nitrate, and slow growing unhealthy corals. Too much flow can cause sandstorms and pummel our stony corals, causing tissue damage. While too little flow basically turns our saltwater aquariums into a soupy dump for food and waste. There are two primary ways to create flow in our tank, a return pump and a powerhead. Our innovative marine build comes with a controllable return pump and two directional return nozzles. While not strong enough to provide the primary flow in our tank, the included return pump will be super helpful in two ways. First, it will help create a varied and turbulent flow pattern. Because we'll be placing wave makers on the sides of our tank, these two return nozzles will create perpendicular flow from the back to the front, helping to break up a completely side-to-side -side linear flow pattern. This more varied water movement will help provide a bit of healthy chaos into our system, providing an overall better habitat for our coral. And second, we'll be able to direct our two return nozzles anywhere we want, which will become really helpful when an inevitable dead spot appears. A dead spot is just an area in the sand bed that doesn't get enough flow, so fish food and waste settle there. By eliminating dead spots when they appear, we keep all of that fish food and waste suspended in the water column, which means it will eventually make its way through the overflow and into our filter socks. The included Mighty Jet return pump is well sized for our system, whatever strength you set it at. So we'll be able to try different flow rates until we achieve our goal. In this build, our primary flow will come from two wave makers, one placed on each side of the tank. Choosing the right wave makers, placing them in the correct location, selecting the right setting, and nailing the proper intensity can be a bit tricky. We built this aquascape with ample space in the front and rear intentionally so we could easily create a circular flow pattern. Because this tank is a long rectangle, it just makes sense to do it this way. But if your tank is a cube, you could also consider placing wave makers on the rear of the tank and creating a back to front pattern. There are three things to consider when choosing the right wave maker or power head as we often call it for your tank. The overall power quantified in the flow rate, either gallons or liters per hour, the angle of flow, which takes a bit of research to figure out, and the shape of the flow. For shape, you either have circular or laminar flow, and due to our aquascape, a circular flow pattern is just the better choice. Because we need our wave makers to push water across three feet of tank, we want an angle of flow somewhere in the middle of the available options. Too narrow and we'll end up blasting some coral while completely missing others. But too wide means the flow will disperse and dissipate too quickly, meaning it won't reach the opposite end, thus not providing adequate flow throughout the tank. And for our third and final consideration, we just want something controllable that we can play with until we get the flow just right. We're going to use a couple of Reef Octopus 2 Plus wave makers. A single controller and power brick can manage both pumps, which helps immensely with our wire management. With an approximately 30% dispersal pattern, we're going to place these wave makers two-fifths of the way down between the water line and the sand bed. On the left side, we'll hug it pretty close to the rear panel, maybe about one to two inches away. Our goal is to move water behind the aquascape and not to blast any portion of the rockwork directly. Then we'll mirror the placement for the second wave maker in the front right. With these two power heads, we should get a really consistent circular water pattern that will keep fish food and waste suspended and eliminate most dead spots. There may be a couple hard to reach places in the middle of the aquascape, but we'll use our two return nozzles to get rid of them. We're setting our two wave makers to synchronous pulse mode with a maximum rate of 70% and a minimum of 30%. We'll set T1 to 0.5 seconds and T2 to 2 seconds. This will give us a nice strong pulsing motion. 
Even though this is a really good starting point, we will have to make adjustments as we go, especially as we add our first coral in. Luckily for us, these octo pulse pumps can be adjusted 15 degrees in any direction so we can fine tune the direction of the water movement. Getting the flow right is absolutely crucial for the health of corals, but getting the lighting right is even more difficult and perhaps even more important. Selecting the right light means considering spectrum, mounting height, and power. You'll need to know which lights grow coral, how to distribute that light, and how to set the right schedule. And all of that's in episode six right here. Thanks for watching, happy reefing, be well, and we'll see you in the next episode.